I'd already been to a number of doctors, um, gastroenterologists, who were trying to figure out what was wrong with me. Very, very quickly, all of a sudden, I dropped a lot of weight. I dropped like 10 pounds in just a couple of weeks. And then I started getting vomiting and diarrhea really badly. Um, it got to the point where I was running to the bathroom about 15 times in a 24 hour period. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. He said, you need to go to a university hospital. And he gave me a list of three names and Dr. Sanborn's name was pretty much at the top of that list. She was in a wheelchair about half the size that she is now, was unable to eat. We ended up hospitalizing her because she was so ill. She had come with the possible diagnosis of Crohn's disease, and I quickly realized this wasn't typical Crohn's disease. But we Googled some of the uh, findings, and one of the big things that she had was massive enlargement of the lining of the stomach. And there was this condition, Cronkite Candida Syndrome. There's only about 400 cases reported in the world. Not everything gets reported, so I'm sure there's more than that, but it's not very common. We were quickly able to work through uh, using the internet and my cell phone, what her diagnosis was. He was kind of looking at all my records and everything that I emailed and he kind of like, yeah, I think I know what this is. And so he was Googling Cronkite Canada Syndrome and when he asked me questions about, oh, what do your nails look like? Well, my nails were all peeling off. I actually lost most of my nails. My hair was falling out. He was able to Google them just to confirm what he already thought. So in Cronkite Candida Syndrome, uh, something uh, goes wrong with the tissues uh, in the gastrointestinal tract. It affects the fingernails as well, but the main thing is the gastrointestinal tract. And you get massive enlargement of the tissues. The inflammatory lesions in the stomach and small intestine and colon, if you don't get those treated, they can progress on to cancer. The therapy regimen that had been reported previously just wasn't working. Us with Cronkite Candida Syndrome, we have hundreds and hundreds of polyps in our entire GI tract. He could just remove like 100 of them and then 150 more could grow back. So what he decided to do was treat me with the biological, with the Remicade, as he would treat a Crohn's patient. Uh, we decided to use a, a drug called Remicade or Infliximab, which we use in ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, and we know that it can treat inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract. The Remicade is really aimed towards treating that inflammation, and the logic is if you treat the inflammation, that it's the inflammation that's driving the cancer risk, and you might be able to treat not only the inflammation and the malnutrition that comes from that, but prevent the subsequent cancer risk and the result was really dramatic. Uh, within a week, she was feeling better. By the second treatment, I knew that it was working. After five months of not eating, I'm like, I think I can eat something. I'm like, wow, I just felt different. It's been miraculous. I've been in remission for six months now. So my belief is that the risk of cancer is going to be dramatically downgraded in her, and it's reasonably safe to continue for the long term. So I think the the risk of continuing it are low and the risk of uh, relapsing if we stop it are high, so it, it probably favors ongoing therapy and the, at least right now that's what she and I have decided to do. Life is, is pretty much about as perfect as it possibly could be right now and, and that's all because of Dr. Sanborn because he wasn't afraid to try something different, he wasn't afraid to try something new. Ingrid went home and she uh, felt better and she shared it on a blog. And the next thing I knew, I have gotten several emails from physicians around the world, one in New Zealand, for instance, writing me that they'd heard that I had treated a patient with Cronkite Candida Syndrome and they had such a patient and they were wondering what the experience was. It was a really great way to keep my friends and family updated and for them in return to offer their support. So they would post messages as well via social networking. They connected me with some other support groups online and that's how I was able to actually connect with a couple of other Cronkite Canada Syndrome patients. So it was actually really great to connect with people and exchange stories. So I'm back teaching art in the classroom again. I'm back to being a mom and every day is just such a blessing.